we are going to fix this figure here. There's some slight little issues with it that I want to fix. And it's kind of been bugging me. So we'll get started here in a minute as I do my sound check. Looks like we got um, Revy on here. So let's take a look. I don't know why the video is not starting yet. So I'm not going to jump into it too quick because I want to have a chance to join so we can get going on this. Tonight will probably be a little bit longer video as I fix this figure. I'm going to fix it from scratch live. There we go. It looks like the video is starting. Sound check, one, two, three. Sound check. All right. So my sound is working. Okay. So let me go and explain the situation. So I uh, got this figure in a different video. You'll probably see me get it. And uh, when I got it, um, it had like some, um, I don't know, some kind of something on it that was kind of musty. So I cleaned it really well. Hey, Mike. Thanks. I appreciate it. And um, then I also noticed there was like some blue right here and some other things like that. It's just not quite what I want. And I noticed the neck peg itself is actually broken in the hole. I don't know if you can see that or not. So right there, the neck peg on this one side is broken. So I have to uh, fix that neck peg as well. So our goal for this figure today is to uh, fix the neck peg inside there. You can kind of see where, if you can see that or not, where it's broken in there. See how it kind of flings on one side. And uh, so fix the neck peg, repaint this to match and then reapply the gold back to her um, tiara on there as well. Cause that, whatever was on here causing that, that moisture damage ruined the gold paint as well on there. So to do this, I, I'm gonna take a couple liberties. Um, one, I have this really cool uh, paint I'm gonna use to mix. It is for face and skin and the link is in the description. And then I'm gonna use this JB Weld to actually uh, solder not solder but they call it soldering i don't know why but basically to weld this thing or keep it so it doesn't move anymore and that should lock this in place it takes five minutes to cure i believe let me take a look here it says on here six minutes i guess i'm off by a minute but even though it cures in six minutes it still um isn't solid for a while and then i have some uh, extra skin color here that i use quite often and then i have my gold paint that i use right here now painting gold is tricky because uh, if you don't do gold right, you end up with uh, um, a sticky situation. I'm going to do a couple demonstrations on gold. Maybe not tonight. Um, I'll see how the time goes. And maybe I might show you guys some other gold fixes too. Hey, Jeremy, thanks for joining us. Jeff, thanks for being here, man. I'm customizing an Origins Moss Man and flocking it with real moss. Excellent. Now, if you guys ever want to show me your stuff that you made, do find me on Facebook. And uh, the way to find me is to go to he-bro.com, he-bro.com. And then once you find me on Facebook, then um, send me the pictures. And, and, if, and if you don't mind, I might even post them here. So if you guys send me something really cool, I might actually post them here as well. All right, so I'm going to heat this up a little bit, see if we can push this in just a little bit. I don't know if I'll be able to or not. And then after I push that in a little bit, then we're going to mix up our um, JB Quick and uh, stuff some inside here and then hold it in place until it sets. And while that's setting, we're going to paint the gold on this because it's going to take like, you know, five to six minutes to set. So I got my trusty heat gun here. I got my Wagner heat gun. It's got two settings. It's got a low and it's got a high. And the high is pretty hot. So I'm going to put it on high. I'm going to heat this up, see if we can't... Uh, Push that in a little bit before we try to meld it together. I have to be careful because the pin is so small on there, there's a high chance of it melting and getting ruined too at the same time. I can see the pins kind of wobbling in there. So that's probably as hot as I can get it. So let's go ahead and see if that was hot enough to uh, push that plastic in. And unfortunately it was not. The... Well, I guess it didn't get very hot at all. Let's go ahead and heat it up some more. So just, this has been the air blowing on it. It caused it to wobble. Now I can't look at your comments while I'm doing this task, but I'll look at them in a minute. So just hold up and I'll take a look at your guys' comments. All right, 
So, yep, that is about as good as it's going to get. Now, I do have a different kind of epoxy that I almost used. It was a clear yellow epoxy. Actually, that did go in a little bit. Cool. So, let's go ahead and mix up our JB Weld. And let me look at your comments really quick while I get this ready. Hey, guys, what I miss? Zachary, you haven't missed much yet. Basically, I've just so far just heated up the top of the figure. And that's about it. Mike Fee created Wondar and King Grayskull. Cool. Ash got the two Kildor pack and the battle damage, battle armor He-Man with Battle Cat 2 pack as well. Nice, Revy. All right, so let's go ahead and mix this up. Now, there are different kinds of epoxies. I just happen to like this. Um, it comes out in kind of a gray color when you're done with it, um, which sometimes could be kind of a downfall. Ooh, I haven't used this in a while. These lids are stuck on there. Let me see if I can find my pliers. I'll be right back with some pliers. All right, I am back, you guys. Those that just joined, I was looking for some pliers so I can take the lid off the tops of these JB Weld things. Hopefully I don't make a huge mess out of it. So let's go ahead and uh, try this again. It looks like there's been some leakage going on. I've been sitting in a dark place for a while. Now this is supposed to mix two equal parts. I know that's way too much, but I'd rather have way too much than not enough. So I can uh, mess with it later as I'm trying to do this. So, oh, that one wasn't stuck on as bad as the other one was. Just a dab of this will do you, right? Oh, this stuff's getting kind of, uh, kind of old. Might be time to go buy some more. Now the black is actually the um, catalyst. So if you add a little bit more black, it will cure quicker. So little little tidbit trick there. Let me go ahead and wipe my hands. I got this stuff all over it. What a mess. Now when you mix this, you wanna mix it so it's uniform so that it has a nice gray consistency color all across. Now I gotta hurry and get this mixed in pretty quick or I'm gonna have a rough spot in the middle because they're already touching. So I have my trusty little screwdriver here and let's just get to mixing this. Now I was tempted to use the clear, that way if I mess up a little bit, it won't be uh, quite as obvious on this figure because obviously it will be harder to, to fill in the dark gray than it would be clear with uh, skin tone paint but I like this better because it's thicker and it wouldn't go all over the place where the clear one could drain down into her body when I go to do it that could be a huge mess so now that I have that let's go ahead and uh, push her head over to one side and then start to load this into the side of her neck just like that and we're going to stuff a bunch in there and attempts to keeping this thing from breaking anymore. That is the plan as we do this. And it's pretty easy to make a mess out of this. You have to be very careful not to make too much of a mess. There we go. Can you guys see it now? Let me watch my video and see if it pops back on. Burp, burp, burp. Okay, cool. We're back on. All right, let's go ahead and keep doing this because again, we only have six minutes for it to harden, which is not a lot of play time. Let's go ahead and stuff some in on this side. 
Got a little bit too much on there. Yes, wearing gloves would have been a good idea. I did think about it. I did walk by the gloves. I thought, man, I should have grabbed those. All right, now that I got that mess on there, I am now going to uh, clean up around it before it hardens. And then we are going to tape over on one side to hold the neck peg at the angle we want it. So let me just stuff some more down there. All right. Just run these Q-tips around here and get it all clean. You know, sometime I should do a Zoom session so you guys could actually talk why I'm doing the video. That'd be kind of cool, huh? I might do that someday, do some classes and set up a Zoom for those uh, Patreon super fans or something. I want to try to get as much off as I can around here because uh, her hair is pulled back. So we're going to use Tila's head to fix this or to customize it. And so a lot of her neck is exposed. So I want to get as much cleaned off as possible before I let this stuff harden. All right, that's looking pretty good. All right, now uh, for the last step, a little bit of alcohol just to get the final clean on there. Yep. Yep. go and now to grab some blue tape check it out i got goliath today you guys in the mail i'll be doing a review on him sometime in the near future and i want to pull this over so that it leans to that side so i got to make sure i have it pulled over as good as i can and we will just leave that on there and let her dry just like that and our litmus test will be the cup when the cup becomes hard then we know that um hopefully her, she is also hardened too so that will be our test so let's see set a timer for six minutes All right, I got a timer counting down. And let me go and check your guys' comments while I'm uh, waiting for that. And we'll start our gold paint while we're waiting too. Let's look at the comments. Hey, Mike, thanks. I appreciate Sengish work with Mattel. That'd be the dream job. You bro should throw a block party. Whoop, whoop. 
Just got the trap jaw from He-Man the Masters of the Universe Netflix cartoon. Nice. The, the jaw doesn't move? Wow, that kind of stinks. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the head. So when I go to paint heads, I like to have a way to hold them so they don't move around. So sometimes I use like some little ball tool, something like this. But you can see that's way too flopsy-mopsy, and this side's too big. And that's the only two sizes that I have on this. There's nothing in between. So to make this work, I'm going to build some heat shrink up and put it on here so that I can build this up so I can fit it on there for my paint. So I happen to have some heat shrink tubing right here. And let's go ahead and just uh, slide that right on there. This will just build it up just a little bit. And then cut off the top. Just a little bit more off there. And then we'll heat this up. And just shrink that tubing right around there. Let's check it out. Let it cool down a little bit. And see if that's closer to the size of her head. Yep, that will work a little better. Well, it's still a little flopsy. So I'm going to add one more. Now, sometimes you can just add some tape on there too. I've done that before as well. So let me add another piece of heat shrink tubing on there. This will probably make it too big. We'll see. So now you guys are getting all my trade secrets. Just slip that on there. I should have waited a little bit longer. It wasn't quite cool enough and just kind of mashed that down, unfortunately. Bad planning on my part. So let's, the good thing is you get to see how I did it again. So that's the cool part. So let's go ahead and do this one more time. This time I will not be so impatient. Yep, that whole saying, haste makes waste. I think I live that line sometimes. All right, we'll just let that sit for a little bit and cool down. Let's take a look at your guys' comments while that's cooling down. These things are getting bigger. I made it. What's up, brother? Oh, hey, Brian. Thanks for joining us. Nice. The secrets of Hebrew shall be mine. Dorky, thanks for joining us. That is hilarious. The secrets of Hebrew. I kind of like that. All right. Let's see if it's cooled down a little bit. All right. And that is a little tight. So I'm actually going to heat her head up. So I can plop it on there. You want it just a little bit soft. There we go. Now her head will stay on there better. 
it's nice and tight on there so now i can hold it and paint without having to worry about the head flopping all over oh there's our timer All right, just for kicks, let's see how hardened this stuff is. So it is getting pretty hard, but it's still tacky and sticky. So we are to that point, you could probably pull the tape off and see how it's looking. And that's, that's looking pretty good. I probably should have pushed it forward a little bit more, but that is the way that head sits in there. But let's go ahead and continue with our gold paint. So I've already washed this head really thoroughly. So the gold paint I use, I actually learned from Hunter Knight Customs to use this paint right here. I've used all kinds of golds, but this seems to be the best right here. And the paint brushes I like to use are these uh, Master's Touch right here. And so again, I'll hold this up so you guys can see it. It's the Citadel. And it's actually um, like already dried. It's really strange when you put it on. So you can kind of see it's kind of crusty dry. Um, so it's not really wet at all, which makes it signs a little harder to put on, but you'll, you'll figure it out as you do it, how it works. I am gonna go, go grab my other glasses. I will aim this on there so you guys can write down the name of that if you want. And I will go I'll be right back. You have to grab my good glasses. back I got my better glasses here that will let me so I can see things close up a little better Let's see if you guys give me any comments while it's gone all right so let's go ahead and, and use this stuff I want you to see what this is like when I put the paintbrush in it's really unusual it kind of comes out in kind of chunks and it's, it's not very friendly when you try to put it on. So it takes a lot of passes to get it to work just right. So let's see if, it, if it'll be nice to me tonight. We'll just dry brush that right on there. Oh, let me raise this up so I can get my hand underneath. Now I'll do this one side first so you guys can kind of see the difference that it makes. It's weird, it's kind of like a, a gel or something or it's like stabbing into jello with your paintbrush. All right, so here is the side outlook before and there's the side after. You can see the difference is, is quite significant. Just has more of a glow shine to it. Actually, my light is dying. Let me get another light. There we go. So here's the painted side, and there's the original side. And look at the difference. You can just see the shine difference on there. So once I get that painted all the way around, it's going to look way better. So let's just go ahead and keep painting this. Now usually I don't paint with the camera on. Usually I do all my painting stuff and then show you guys the end results. So tonight you guys are getting something special. Yes, it's gonna be slow and 
monotonous to watch me paint this little helmet, this little tiara, but the cool thing is normally you would not get this, this footage from me. I might do a montage or a speed thing showing it. Yeah, it's funny. I've used so many different kinds of gold paint before. And when I saw this and saw Hunter Knight Customs use it, I was like, dude, that is the way to go. Even though you have to put a good clear coat on it afterwards because it doesn't really uh, stay on on its own very well. But afterwards, I will put some blue tape around it. I'll take it downstairs and put a nice coat of clear on it. and It will look really good. Yeah, there's a guy in here right now. His name is uh, Nerf Curator. Um, he's one of the guys watching right now, and he is like really good at painting stuff. I've seen him paint some amazing things. Um, he's taken that Joker uh, riding lizard animal and just has painted it. It looks so cool. He uh, does a lot, a lot of Transformer stuff, and he also does a lot of Nerf stuff, and some of his painting is just amazing. I, I one time gave him a gold sword, or not a gold sword, a fire sword. And uh, I thought I did a great paint job on it. I mailed it to him. He's like, hey, that's all right, bro. And then he went and he uh, repainted it and it looks so much better. Brian, I could use you here right now to help me paint this stuff. But luckily the TR is pretty easy. I think I'm getting this. So if you want to do some Shira painting or anything else, and you're going to use golds, sometimes if you use those spray paints, um, they'll just never dry. They'll stay sticky forever. Or sometimes if you use those um, gold pens that you can get at the craft store, it's the same way. Sometimes it will just never dry depending on the kind of plastic underneath it. Well, being this stuff's already a gel type material, it's already half dry, if you will. And so... It uh, goes on. It's kind of tricky to paint it on the first time you use it, but because of the consistency of it, it, it actually dries much nicer on the parts. There we go. That looks way better than what I had originally. I'm going to try to get that seam. Now, Mattel did not paint the seam right here, but I kind of want to paint it on mine, so I'm just going to come in there and Come back and paint that. That's the nice part too. If you're gonna fix up a, a figure, you can actually fix the original mistakes that they made when they designed the figure. I should do a whole series, painting with Hebro. All right. It does look a lot better. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Looks like on the back side, they didn't they miss some spots too on the original paint job. There we go. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. 
All right, I think I'm done. Hooray. Dun, dun, dun. Close that up. I'll clean my paintbrush out later. Let's go ahead and check on this uh, stuff now. Oh yeah, that is pretty solid now. All right, so now what I like to do is I wanna be careful not to spray paint the face. So what I'll do is I will put a bunch of painter's tape all over her except for her tiara. And then I'll run her downstairs and throw on a matte finish paint on her really quick or a shiny finish, whatever I decide. And that will then make it so that it will the paint will adhere better. I don't have to worry about having it fluff off as time goes on. It sits in my different boxes. I used to have better painter's tape. This tape is not as good as what I used to have. Nope. It's like Tila's body fell over. My body, what happened? Now the main thing is you want to keep the clear paint off of the skin especially. It looks really strange if you get it on the skin. The hair is not quite as bad, but sometimes those clear paints will leave like a sticky residue all over the figure. So you want to be careful. You only get it where you painted. Otherwise you'll end up with kind of a mess of stickiness everywhere. You want to bring that right up and kind of mask it. And, and I find it works better to use just uh, ugh, different strips. It doesn't really matter as long as you get it on there. So you can kind of see I'm kind of making a mess out of my strips of, uh, of tape. You'll see if you do this right, you'll be really happy at the end results when you're all done. Whoops, sorry, I'm out of the camera view. I'm like, man, what is he doing? Yep. Tip number two of Hebro, when you, before you spray your clear, mask off the area you want to hit only. Really important, otherwise your fingers will get all sticky and you'll have clear where you don't want it. So get that all masked off. All right, I will be right back after hitting this with my clear spray paint. I will go and put these paints in front of the camera so you guys can take a look at it, so you guys can write down what these paints are and uh, entertain each other with chats or click the link and check out the auctions and I'll be right back, you guys. Make sure that anybody new who joins, let them know I'll be right back.
Hey you guys, I'm back. Uh, got it all painted. I brought my spray paints up so you can see what I used. So, let me get my glasses back on. So I first hit it with this Color Max Clear, and then I did a really light dusting with the matte just so it wasn't too shiny. You can kind of see the mess right there. It takes about 15 minutes for it to totally solidify. And there you go. The gold paint again was this Citadel. So that is what I use for the gold if you missed that. So I'll put these paints right here so you guys can see them. And like I said, this does dry pretty quick. I have found sometimes it works good to use the heat gun on it and a, and a fan at the same time. I don't have a fan in here, unfortunately, but I'll just hit it with some heat. So I got the heat gun right here. It's just to do a quick dry so we can keep going on this. And you can see where the paint is. It has that real wet look to it because I used the shiny paint on it, even though now it's dry at this point because this paint does dry really quick. Let's go ahead and pull the tape off and see what we got underneath here. Hooray. We did not coat our face with clear paint, so that was a good sign. Ugh. Tila, why can't you talk? Oh, there we go. And look at that nice new painted gold tiara with the clear coats on it. I put it on really thick just because I want to make sure that gold paint doesn't slough off in the future. Put the tape on a little too thick too. Ugh. All right. Ta-da. So I'm going to set this head aside for a while so we can start working on the neck and the body. I really want a Classics King Gray Skull. Yeah, those are kind of hard to find, man, right now, but that is a really cool figure. So I'll just put her head right up there and wait, and let's work on her neck. So the problem is, on the sides of her neck, we have this blue going on there from the plastic. And I kind of want to cover that up with some skin tone so that it's not so obvious. Now the hardest part about skin tone is everyone's skin's a different shade. I mean, you get that all the time, especially with the figures, trying to match that skin tone can take a while. Normally I start with this paint right here. I just label it skin, it's not really. And then I use this and mix other colors to it to eventually get a good tone to match. But today I'm trying something different. So I'm trying something new. And I got a new brush just for this too. where I am going to uh, use the Valo paints and see if I can't find a good color mix using the, the face and skin paints. So here are all my colors. I'm gonna go ahead and find one. I got light pink flesh. I got dark flesh. Looks pretty orange compared to her. And then I have this right here. That's not very fleshy looking. So I think I'm gonna start with the darker flesh. Shake it up really good and let's see if we can mix colors to make it match her. How about this light flesh? No, it's just like super Tila pink from the comics. That's way too pink. Now, Again, it's my first time reusing these particular paints for skin. I use them for all kinds of other stuff. So this will be kind of fun to see what, what happens. This looks like it's way too orange. Yeah, that is pretty orange. Well, I guess once I mix it up, it doesn't look too bad. 
because her skin is a little pinker. So I'm going to add some of this pink color. Just set it right over here. And let's see if we can't do a nice mix between these two. Now, when I match the skin color, I like to put it on the back of the leg. That's a really easy spot to clean off later. So I will take the back of her leg and just do a little boop. And you can see how light that is. Well, we don't know what really color it is until it dries. So after you stick it on the back of her leg, now it does look a little too yellowish to me, but let's just go ahead and leave it there, heat it up and dry it. And later on when I add a clear coat to it, it's gonna get even darker than that. So that actually is not too bad. It's just the wrong shade. I need just a little bit more pink in it. So let me go ahead and see if I can find something to add a little bit more red to it without totally destroying it. That's a little too pinkish or too uh, orangish. Now red is a very strong color. So if I was just to add a drop of red, I would just totally destroy the color. But if I'm very careful and add less than a drop, it potentially could work. Now, a tan or a brown might actually be a better choice because tan and brown have red in it too. And uh, so I might go with this light brown in order to uh, change the skin tone a little bit. So let me go ahead and add this light brown to it. Burp. There we go. I can already tell that's going to look pretty good once I get this all mixed. So let's just mix a little bit this in with our lighter color. Wow, that is a strong color. That looks very skin tony. Yeah, that's going to be pretty good, I think. Let's try it in the back of her leg because it's easy to clean off. Boop. That does look pretty good. Maybe just still a little bit more yellowish than I want. I'm just gonna go ahead and just apply it to the back of her neck or the side of her neck. And let's see how that comes out. So when I apply my paint, I like to do it as dry as possible. Remember, we're trying to fill in that seam on the side more than anything else. That's really our goal on this. So after I fill the seam in, I'm actually going to clean off the paint around the sides of it. Just so that I am focusing just on the seam and leaving as much as original color as I can on it. That way it's not so obvious. All right, so you guys are fighting online about which figures are cool or not. You can see that already looks a lot better to cover up some of that blue. I'm going to hit the heat gun really quick, just so it can dry. All right. Yeah, that match did come out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it.
Oh, good. I'm still in the camera frame. I thought I might have been ignoring you guys and being out of the camera frame. All right. Just about done with this. And even though it's not perfect, it does look a lot better than that big old blue seam we used to have on the side. I hope you guys can see it or not. It does look a lot cleaner than it did. I mean, I still have some seam there because, of course, the plastic has a seam. But there you go. Let me see if I just can get enough paint on here just to clog that hole in that seam right there. And if I can't, that's okay. I can I can live with it, I guess. All right. I want you guys to notice how dry my brush is. I mean, it's just barely putting any paint on at all. And that's that's what I'm trying to do. You just want to barely just, just put the paint on. That way you don't change the original color too much. Just fill in the gaps that are there. And I think that's looking pretty good. There we go. Nice. Now, I could go downstairs and hit it with a clear. I'm tempted to. I'm only debating back and forth in my head if I should or not. But I'm afraid that I might get too much of that clear on her actual original skin. Then it will be kind of a mess. I'm going to go and set this here so you guys can look at it while I go wash my paintbrushes. I'll be right back. All right, you guys, I am back. Let's go ahead and pop that head back on there. That Tila head should be done by now. Let me look at you guys' comments really quick. Let's see. Todd, you should work in funeral homes. Thanks, Rick. So let's go ahead and uh, put this head back on. Now, because I don't want to break the pin right off the bat, I am going to heat this head up just so that it will uh, go on there easy for me. Moment of truth. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, that fits really loose on there. Now, I did notice it was loose before on there, so her head is not quite deep enough to fit on there very well. So we are going to sand that hole deeper. And I did notice that when I was putting it on there, that the sorceress's head sits higher up than hers. So if some of this head's going to be on there forever, that hole gets to become deeper. So I'll get right back and I grab my Dremel tool. We're going to sand that hole deeper while we're at it. Want me to fix that Skeletor, huh?
All right, so I got my Dremel tool so we can get busy on this. Now, for those that do use Dremel tools, this is my favorite bit right here. So if you're ever gonna get bits, these are the ones I use to sand out the armbands for the 2000Xs and all kinds of stuff. Today we're not using these though because these are too big around in diameter and it will destroy the head. So I have my handy dandy Dremel tool kit here with all kinds of bits and stuff. And I have a couple here that are my favorites for drilling out holes. Now because it's a female head, it's a much smaller hole than the male heads. So I gotta find a nice little rounded bit to do this. Now something like this could work, but this would just kind of drill into it way too fast. I may set this aside because I may get stuck using that because her head is so small. Here's a, another one with a diamond finish on it, but it has a square peg on the bottom, so it might be kind of weird too. The one I'm looking for is a small little silver stone that I used to always use. Ah, oh, there it is. There is my silver stone. Bum -ba -da. This is what I usually use for female heads. Let me make sure it's the right one. Oh yeah, look at that. It fits in there nicely. So we'll use that to dig her head in deeper. So she can sit on the head correctly or on the neck correctly. And let's unplug my heat gun and plug in my Dremel tool. Yeah, I was thinking it was too shallow. I guess I was right, it was a little bit too shallow there. And uh, that might be why the head seems so loose to me when I first put it on there originally uh, the other day. I thought it was just because the neck peg was broken, which the neck peg was broken, but it was also because the head was too shallow to fit in there. So a couple things when you do this. One is uh, the goal is to get it really, really, really hot. I want the plastic inside there to just be almost bubbling, melting. And the reason is once it gets to that temperature, I'm just gonna shove it on the, the neck peg and it is gonna make the exact shape I need inside the head. So that is the goal. So it's not just to grind it out, but it is to grind it and then um, heat it up too. So that is what we're trying to do. All right, so. Let's go ahead and get going on this. So, oh, knocked over the paint. So I should put some of this paint away. So look at that mess. Here's, here's our palette we use for our skin colors. And it's funny, people always ask me, well, how much do you mix of each one? And I never know, because I do it every single time fresh. I never really have measured what it was. And like I said, I could have used red instead of brown, just a whole lot less red. So, you know, there's so many different ways to go with it. All right, so here we go. Moment of truth. Now, when I do this, I'm going to angle it a little bit forward so she can look down. And that's kind of my goal on this. So here we go. pretty hot inside there let's jam it on there oh yeah there we go that fits oop so much better so I can feel how it's actually a lot tighter now it sits lower on the neck much better connection and she can look down a little bit because I aimed it that way and uh, I think that will work pretty good oh all right you guys that is how you customize your Tila. And uh, hopefully you guys learned something today. If not, that's okay too. Just like and subscribe. Tell your friends. And uh, I will see you guys next video. And uh, I will show you guys some more gold painting if that's what you want to see. Um, I do have another figure that needs some help. And that is my King Randor custom. His paint has melded to his cape. So we get to clean off the paint and reapply the new paint that Hunter Knight Customs has uh, shown me. Yeah, I'm way happy with her now because now you don't have all the dark lines on her neck anymore. It fits nicely. Her head is more solid on there now. She is ready to go. All right, you guys. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, and I will see you guys next video. Bye now.